Share. How do you want me to message you? We'll give a little um, bit of uh, whatever. Just send me an email or chat with uh, send me as an email. Chat chat with, uh, email. <laughs> I don't think I'm logged in as like I don't really do Facebook. There it is. Okay. And you can post it in the chat. That's. Oh, let's make sure it works first. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We almost have it. Yeah, but I get out of the room so that I can put it on the feedback. Although it was like three seconds delay. So. Oh, yeah, there's going to be a delay. Yeah, because it has to process or process, upload it to YouTube, and then zip it down to you. Bring it closer just so that the audio is closer to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, that's fine. Okay. Yeah. yeah. It's just that picture. <clears throat> well, All right, I, so. I thought it was kind of awesome. My head just floating in the picture. Floating in the like picture? That. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so. All right, so probably. It's a typical webcam sounding audio, but it's not, it's not reverberating. That's fine. It's probably, so it's probably the webcam that's the problem. Okay, so we've had to change. I've never had an issue with it before, but it must be. Okay, so can I just take the YouTube link and copy, like, just take that and paste it into the live link? Yeah. Uh, okay. And then post it. We'll all. Um, yeah. Rob, are you reposting in Discord and stuff right now? I'm going to try to. Okay. Did you already post it? In Discord, I did, yes, in the competition area. So where, okay. where do you want me to post it? Should I? I'm trying to get onto the Facebook. Oh yeah, they're saying audio is better. <laughs> <laughs> that is awesome. The new A at the age two, they'll go. You, you're the problem. Well, yeah, because of the uh, <laughs> and I like the uh, the map behind it. That's kind of like a, a new station or something. Like, <laughs> yeah, very professional. Hey, when we go here. back, can you just be like, and we're live, returning with you? <laughs> can we do that? <laughs> You could stream, you could edit them together, I guess. Like, you had to do editing stuff. Video editing. I know there's got to be a way. Yeah. Okay, oh, man. So, a oh, new link coming soon. Did they have a new link? In Discord? Yes. I'm just sure. posting on every, anywhere else, yeah. Okay. Yeah. We and we have one person showing how many friends logged in. We have now, oh, we just dropped a number, everybody. That's not good. We went from four to three. Uh, yeah. <laughs> what? We'll have a new link coming soon. Check Discord now. Are you able to post in the comments of the video? Of the I'm in there right okay. now. Oh, so you're, you're, you're your mm -hmm. I'm actually going to pull. So he has that there. Uh, start in five minutes. Let's take this. Five Copy minutes. the link. Two. Paste that. Live event is over. Chat is no longer available. There we go. So that new. YouTube is now, link is in there. Close that, try this. Competition info. Did you send it to the competitors as well? Like as an email? Um, Audio is way better. Okay. It's, it's, Who is this it's, Craig Lee? It's 15 God. individual. Block him already. What did you do? Ah, oh, it's Craig. He should be blocked anyways. <laughs> Um, all right, so we'll uh, believe we're somewhat live here. Looks like we've got Amanda saying the audio is way better. Craig Lee gives us uh, the he's unzipping. Oh, so he's so he's giving us the measurement. Okay, that's why it's nice and small there. Perfect. So Craig Lee is awesome. So we've got a couple people joining us. Hopefully, everyone's able to join us. Um, from the previous one, um, if you were there, uh, you probably heard a lot of uh, really bad sound quality. We you're welcome. welcome. Yeah, Chris says you're welcome. I apologize. Uh, Chris's basement is acoustically awesome for our weekend beer update or weekend of oh hey chucks, whatever some of the other fun comments were. Uh, so we'll just do a quick recap here. Um, again, I'm Corey, the president of the Edmonton Home Brewers Guild. 
Thank you for joining us. Um, sorry about the previous technical difficulties. Um, and thank you again to everyone for submitting your beer entries and uh, getting those dropped off in a timely fashion. Um, um, we are here at Chris's basement uh, getting this all done. So Chris is our competition coordinator um, and Chris will be able to explain a little bit more about what the competition is. I'm also here joined with uh, Marie, who is our education coordinator. Um, she will explain a little bit afterwards about what we will be looking and tasting for. So Chris, why don't you just kind of touch base a little bit here on what the competition is. Fantastic. Legend has it that we are in our 11th year of the Iron Brewery. It's, uh, <laughs> it's only legend, but uh, it is an inaugural event for the, the club. So uh, it is a member only hmm? event that uh, we host once a year, traditionally in the spring. And uh, the goal is to showcase a unique product uh, or ingredient each year uh, to challenge brewers to kind of use something they probably don't use on a normal basis and, uh, well, to have some fun with it. So creativity is the name of the game. And, uh, you know, we've got 15 really unique, uh, hopefully exciting beers to try today. And uh, the goal of which is to really showcase and highlight the ingredient this year, which is rye. So Marie, in just a moment, will again give us a little bit of an overview and education on uh, what we might be looking for and some best practices for that particular ingredient. Uh, we're going to take we're going to utilize a very casual scoring system today. So traditionally, in a BG, BJCP certified event, the Professional Beer Judge Certification Program, they use a score sheet like this. Uh, it's a very standardized template. Uh, it is a 50 point scoring system uh, where you are basically breaking down the score between aroma, appearance, flavor, mouthfeel, and overall impression. Uh, we're not gonna use that today, just for the interest of time. Uh, but uh, if this were a BGACP certified event, uh, that would be the format. And it's, uh, it's a very excellent way to get consistent feedback. Uh, if that is your goal to number one, get feedback and ultimately make uh, better beer, then there are numerous great uh, events throughout the year from each of the homebrew clubs here uh, across Canada. And the Edmonton Homebrewers Guild event uh, is coming up this June called the Aurora Brewing Classic. So uh, we love uh, you know sharing more information on that. So with that being said, you know we're going to take a very casual approach, just evaluating the beers, talking them through today. Uh, and then what we're going to do near the end is we're going to try to narrow down probably our top three beers, uh, top three to four beers, uh, and then we're probably going to retaste them at the end, and then we're going to uh, allocate our first place, second place, and third place uh, winners from the event. So with that being said, I'll, I'll hand it over to you, Marie, to uh, tell us a little bit more about brewing with rye. Uh, so rye is a terrible ingredient, and no one should use it. Um, <laughs> but on the plus side, you all did. So we apologize profusely for making you brew with rye. Um, no, but legitimately rye is kind of only used in a store context. That's why there isn't a ton of beers in the BJSP catalog with rye in them. They're just not popular enough to make it that far. Um, it's historically a cask beer served in a cellar at slightly less than room temperature. And it is just a gigantic pain in the ass to brew with. It's gummy, it's got more beta glucan than wheat, it's naked, you're gonna to need to add a whole bunch of uh, rice flakes just to sparge your water properly. Um, so yeah, but what we're looking for in the style is that the rye is actually able to be tasted, it's not overpowered by other ingredients. Um, so if you just completely hot bomb the heck out of your, your uh, beer, we might not even be able to tell that there's rye in it, except for the fact that it's probably cloudy now. Um, so we're looking for spicy phenols, hopefully some sort of complement to that, um, either that or you just got completely out of the way uh, so that we can taste some of those black pepper characteristics that you're not really going to find in rye. Amazing. Amazing. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you for that. Uh, amazing. Perfect. Thank you for that feedback. Um, <laughs> all right. Um, I believe uh, we are ready for our first beer. So on schedule, we, this is beer number fifteen for the people viewing. So beer number fifteen. Can you get this? 
Okay. So we are maintaining uh, an element of blindness uh, throughout the evaluation of beer. So we do not know who the brewer of this beer is. Uh, all that we know oh, is, so this is, is the Czech, Czech dark lager. We just know the base beer style. Uh, that is it. And ultimately, that's traditionally the goal with beer judging and evaluation is eliminate bias, eliminate uh, as much as you can. So pretty simple. I'm excited to get into the first one. Yeah. All right. So uh, I normally start with judging by appearance because that's you know the easiest way to, to get your three points if we're doing a sheet, which we're not. But if this was going to be judged as a check dark lager, the color, you know, pretty close. We've got uh, some head retention. Rye beers usually have quite a bit of head retention because of all of the excess protein in there. Uh, but clarity, as you can see, or if you can't see, I don't know how well the webcam is working here. This is terrible. It, it is, work. I mean, it's characteristic for a rye beer, but trying to make a lager with a rye beer, if you're looking for clarity, this is not going to happen. Good news for you is uh, if this were a BJCP event, appearance is only three points out of 50. So you don't get hurt very much in that area, but yeah, obviously the ingredient is gonna be tough on this, but I gotta say this this beer smells really, really good though. It does so, yeah. have some good lacing. Yeah, excellent work on bringing out the rye character. I'll say mm -hmm. right off the bat, you can definitely smell it. There's rye in it. Um, mm. By that or it's my white wine glass. Thanks for that guy. Well, you know, we're all about the, uh, the classy touch of the Poetic Weekend uh, update. So. <laughs> we don't drink beer over here very frequently. It's mostly white wine and Chardonnay. So. Beer is the new wine. <laughs> beer. Yeah, so it definitely has um, that creamy texture to it that rye is going to give you, similar to wheat, uh, probably even more so. Um, getting the black pepper characteristics is fantastic. Uh, my only critique really for this one um at least right off the bat is going to be uh that it's slightly oxidized like you're starting to get some of the oxidation characteristics which is very easy to do with rye which is why i said it does not travel well oh next uh i, I to be honest i don't perceive oxidate oxidation as, as like just myself, my perceptions, it's its not as obvious traditionally. I just have a more challenging time picking up unless it's very obvious. So uh, like the aromatics, I really, really love on this beer. Um, again, getting that, uh, that nice black pepper note, but like some nice caramelly notes as well too, uh, from probably the, uh, uh, the specialty malts that were used. The body, the mouth feels really, really nice on this. Uh, I think the, the bitterness is, is spot on. And the flavor is really good too. Uh, I like kind of that little lingering earthiness uh, as it finishes. So I think we're off to a really good start here. Yeah, that's a it's a decent beer. A uh, little bit cloudy. Um, I thought the color was okay. Uh, some decent lacing. The aroma is nice. You can definitely pick up the rye in the aroma. Um, mouthfeel. I actually thought it was a little bit um, thin. Silky. Keep in mind it is a lot. Yep. Um, um, overall, though, good taste. Um, maybe a touch oxidized. Um, I probably don't pick up on that as much as Marie. Um, I'm also not as experienced on that. Um, decent beer. It's a good start. I like it. What's the base style on this one again? Check dark lager. Check dark Check lager. Dark lager. lager. So yeah, I think we're starting off pretty solid. Yeah. Okay. okay. So we are ready for the next one, which I believe, at least according to this, is the American wheat. American wheat. Okay. Robbie, uh, you among us? Yeah. Okay. Perfect. All right. And uh, I'm not really sure what the American wheat is supposed to be. It's number 14 for whoever is doing the American wheat. Um, like. Are we going to get something that is an American wheat with just the wheat replaced with rye or supplement? Because there isn't, like I said, rye is not a popular mm -hmm. ingredient. It's very difficult to work with. There is no equivalent of an American wheat, mm -hmm. um, at least not one that's popular enough to make it into the BJCP. So when we do look at the BJCP uh, guide here, uh, an American wheat beer. Uh, is a 1D. Uh, the moderate sh or aroma should be low to moderate, grainy, bready, or doughy wheat character. 
Um, esters can be moderate to none, although should reflect relatively neutral yeast strains. Banana is inappropriate. Yeah, you're basically looking for uh, a Bud Light, but with wheat in it. Um, apparent. Uh, so if you were going to enter this into a PJCP uh, certified competition, Marie, would you, would you put this in an experimental category since this is quite outside the So door? all of these, every single one of these beers, except for the Hogan Beal and the um, the IPA with rye, because that is a category, or the rye IPA is a category. Everything else would have to go into the experimental category and you have to declare what the ingredient is that you used. So that Czech dark lager would probably do fairly well in that category because it's totally outside the box. But the lager itself was brewed quite well. Yep. So, um, starting off with this American wheat, it's actually clearer than that Czech dark lager. Um, I mean, not by much. You are going to have quite a bit of beta gluten haze in there. Um, again, I don't know if they just complemented with wheat or they just completely replaced the wheat with rye. So I guess we're going to find out here. So quite sulfury on the aroma to start. Um, in order to avoid that when you're using an American strain, uh, you're going to need to oxygenate appropriately, um, especially if it's on the higher end, you're going to need to use, uh, sorry, in the higher end of gravity, you're going to need to use pure oxygen. Either that or you just need to pitch more yeast because, you know, sulfur yep. tends to build up because the yeast have been essentially interrupted as they are going through one of their phases and it's just got too much sulfur kind of in a backlog in that nutrient chain. Right. So if it, if it runs out of sugar and then just has to stop, that's when all that sulfur ends up happening. Uh, yeah, looking at this, um, I do think the color definitely fits what uh, the guideline recommends. Um, definitely seems to be lacking a little bit of head retention. Um, at least mine does. Um, Mine's fine. What's fine? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yours is fine. Chris the head retention? Yeah. Okay. All right. yeah, yeah, pretty good. So yeah, head, head retention can um, can depend on where in the bottle you're pouring it, especially if it's not homogeneous, which a lot of beers with high beta gluten levels, like um, wheat beers or like rogan beers, um, is going to happen. There's going to be some settling that occurs. Yeah. Um, just kind of looking at this one, um, does have a little bit of a haze to it. Not much, though. Um, but it is still visible. Um, aroma, yeah, I get a little bit of a grainy, kind of a, maybe a little bit of a doughy. Definitely get some of that sulfur as well. Yeah, behind that I'm getting some berry esters. Mm -hmm. For me, like lemon is like that yeah. secondary note. Yeah, but I agree, like the sulfur is kind of, uh, prominent up front. So when I'm still swirling, I'm trying to get rid of all yeah, that. Yeah, hopefully blow off a little bit. Uh, but yeah, head retention good on mine. Uh, flavor wise, I yeah, that sulfur still kind of at the forefront. Uh, I'm not getting a lot of the rye character. Like I'm looking for it, but I think that sulfur is kind of masking it, really. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Even I, in the even in the taste, I'm not sorry, I'm interrupting. But even in the taste, like the rye is, it is there. Mm -hmm. But it is very muted. I think like the dominant characteristics, obviously the sulfur, then the esters, a um, little bit of doughiness. Funny enough, this one is thinner than that than that Czech dark lager. Yeah. Carbonation wise, I, I'm like a medium. I think for an American wheat, I'd like to see a little higher carbonation. I can't as well really too. comment. I've been shaking. Yeah. Yeah. Stuff. Fair enough. Um, yeah. To me, it's missing the. The rye portion of it, though, it doesn't it doesn't present a significant. Uh, the rye isn't overly present in it. It's there if you dig for it, but it's not. It doesn't doesn't jump. Whereas that first beer, um, the rye was 
very present in that one. Yeah, uh, I'm getting the earthy hops or some earthy hops at the end. Um, the hops seem a little bit stale to me. Not to the point of being cheesy, but um, but yeah, the bitterness is present, but it is quite quite muted as well. Um, I will say though that this finish is clean. Like there's no lingering presence of any of it. So aside from the, the sulfur, this fermented really well. That's um, I'm just like, this is quite bland, but then again, I'm a person who doesn't believe American wheat should even exist <laughs> as a style. It's like a dream, like why, why did I drink this? All right. Perfect. Hey, nice attempt. Whoever that was at, really good base beer there. A couple things maybe just to clean up on the yeast health side of things and uh, an interesting one to try. So thank you. All right. So this one, number three, uh, is a Rogan beer. It's number 11 for whoever brewed it. Rogan beer. Okay. Mm -hmm. So this should be your classic German style. You're thinking you're, you just walk through the Black Forest and you are now in a fancy looking pub with uh, smoked thatch roofs and no chimneys. Or a witch's cabin. Or, or a witch's cabin, you know, because <laughs> witches are well known for their casks of broken beer in the basement, you know. That's that's a thing all witches do. <laughs> You're saying that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> more sense in my head. All right. Um, I'm surprised there's no head on it. Like, did, did you guys get any? Uh, I do not. Again, I'm trying not to shake mine too much. Save some carbonation, but uh, it does have a lovely color. You've got kind of that amber, copper, orange, which is exactly what the BJCP says it should be. Um, it is missing that big frothy head stand, though. Um, and that can come from a lot of things, you know. Uh, if you read Charles Bamforth, who's basically known as the Pope of Foam, he will, yeah, no, that's, that's what they call him, the Pope of Foam. I don't know how they decided on Pope versus King or whatever. Um, but he will go through a list of all of the foam positive, foam negative characteristics that you can possibly do to uh, either increase or decrease the amount of foam in your beer. So if you read up on him, he and you read about all the things that are going to affect the foam stand in your beer, um, you will probably figure out exactly why there is no head on this beer. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm getting like huge fruity esters on this. Uh, oh, absolutely. Bubble gum. Yeah. Uh, it, it smells really good. Like it reminds me of making a uh, fresh yeast starter on uh, really aromatic yeast and it, uh, it pops. Uh, I don't know about like the rye character. I mean, it might be there like a little bit of pepperiness maybe at the end, but yeah. again, it is big, bold uh, fruity esters up front. Yeah. And that's kind of what you're expecting from a store bowl and meal is you are never going to be blown out of the water with rye characteristics. You okay? You know, pepper. There's pepper. <laughs> See, you're never going to be blown away uh, through pepper characteristics in the aroma, uh, especially when it's competing with kind of a wheat yeast or, you know, what we call POF positive strains. But you can tweak wow. if you're playing a little bit with the pit rate and the oxygen or oxygenation. You can tweak your um, wheat yeast to either give off more phenols and that would complement their eye, or you can tweak it more toward esters, the bubble gum, which is what we're getting here. Um, I do get the, uh, the, the spicy clove, a mm -hmm. little bit of a citrus mm -hmm. out of it. Mm -hmm. Listen, um, this is fun too, right? Like the, uh, the palate and the flavors of the beer are actually like quite different than what I was smelling. Do you find it as well too? Yeah. This is this is a fun beer. It's fun. Uh, I'm getting a little bit too much um, sourness on it. The tartness, yeah. Like I actually have some tingling on my tongue from this. Yeah. So I am not sure if this one pen? has. <laughs> I'm not sure if this one had a lacto taint because it's got that lemony sourness, mm -hmm. um, or whether or not it's just I don't know. Outside of yeah, outside of lacto, I can't think of any beer using these ingredients, assuming they're using traditional OMBO ingredients that are going to give you this, unless it's got a bit of an infection to it. Yeah, the improvement for this one to me would be the head retention. 
Um, otherwise, this one I think was actually done fairly well. Yeah. A um, little bit lighter in color than what the um, guide recommends. Could be a little bit darker, but uh, not disappointed with where it's at right now. Yeah. I'm pretty happy with that. I would take I mean, another one of those. That said, if there is a bit of a lack of infection, that would totally explain where the head went. Um, and keep in mind as well, if you're number 14 watching this, this is the beer that we are drinking here. Um, it might not be the exact beer that you're drinking at home, uh, which might be totally different and have a totally different flavor profile, not be infected, could be the bottle, um, for any number of things. If you want to, and I say this to people who, you know, want to ask about, oh, how do I improve my competition beer? Um, you know, throw a bottle in the back of your car on a hot summer day and drive around for a week and then see what it tastes like. And that's probably what the judges are drinking and you will get a much better idea of how your beer travels. All right. Um, this one is awesome. the Dark Mile. Uh, so number nine for those of us at home. Um, okay. So being a Dark Mild, um, looking at it right out of the gate, uh, we've got some decent head on it. Uh, the color looks to be... Uh, a, a kind of a ruby copper color there it looks pretty solid that way. Um, what I can tell of it, it's actually fairly clear, yeah, I'm color, not sure I'm in here. which looks really nice. Um, initial impression, um, yeah, I definitely get that bready, doughy, malty, definitely a high dose of malt. Um, Definitely a, a sweetness to it. Um, yeah, that aroma is uh, is fairly nice. <clears throat> yeah, looks chocolate notes from the darker uh, malt are really coming through. Um, you dig a little bit deeper, I think uh, we do have a little bit of DMS there. Uh, yes, just a little bit of uh, that lingering kind of like vegetable vegetal stink. Yeah, almost. It's subtle. I mean, it's not huge and bold, but it's a common problem that we have at uh, brewing at our altitude. Right? Is uh, for those of you that watch the Brewlosophy podcast, you know you've been conditioned to think that you need a 60-minute boil um, to uh, to get rid of your DMS. But no, here uh, traditionally uh, we're looking for 90 to 120 minutes to really help with that, especially when you're using Pilsner strains of malt. Um, but it, it does; it smells good. I agree. Yeah, I, that aroma as a whole, like the initial impression on it, is fairly solid. Um, yeah, behind that, I'm also getting, and behind the DMS, I'm also getting lysated yeast. So I'm I'm thinking that the pitch was not the most healthy. It feels okay. A little bit of a tang, a little bit of a spiciness. There, yeah, there's... Um, uh, it's almost like uh, too much brown malt was used. Um, brown malt generally doesn't uh, age very well. Uh, it is hard to make a, a brown ale and have it keep. Um, I almost get a little bit of that. Maybe that's uh, some of that lysated yeast that Marie was talking about. But no, I get what you're saying with the brown malt. Um, there's a magic number where you can use malts within a certain uh, spectrum and it's something like 20% is about as far as you can push it before you get what we, I don't know if you guys still call it this, but we used to call it the brown note. Okay. And <laughs> it's, sure, that it's works. definitely got the brown note. Uh, just probably because they use a little bit too much of malts, colored malts in that specific spectrum. But I think it's somewhere around um, something like 40 to 50 low bond all the way up to 120. Use too much malt in that spectrum. It's just going to give you this weird brown paper bag flavor. And it's not oxidation. It's just that's too much brown malt. Mm -hmm. Okay. So overall, a little light on the body for me too. Just it is a mild. It's yeah. supposed to be like 3%. So it's going gonna, it's gonna to be quite light. Yep. Yeah. You know what, Friday after work, I would drink one of these. Yeah, one of the, sure. old, uh, the old coal miners. 
Yeah. Okay. So as you're going through these, just so that we know which ones to kind of go back to, I'm gathering. So the the chart, the check dark water. You really like that one. The American wheat sounds like that one was bland. So you don't want to go back to that one. Like, hey, we can say bland. Well, hey, I said bland. I'm okay. trying to. Say, so I, I will take. When, when you go back to these, I'm trying to figure out which ones you want to go back. I stand accountable for all of the bullshit I say. So with, okay. the, no Amer with the American wheat one, though, did you? Is that one of them you think you'd want to go back to or not? Um, it was. Um, mind you, I'm again. I'm biased. It's not my favorite style. So I'll defer to these two gentlemen. And I am unbiased, so this is great. We got both ends of the spectrum. Like I have literally probably had. I can count the number of five years I've had in my life on one hand. So. We'll keep going. Um, All right, uh, this is number five, five isn't it? Five. All right, so this is Irish stout. So this is a rye Irish stout. So we're looking for, you know, something fairly um, not malt heavy, we're looking for something dry, a little bit of a hot presence at the end, and hopefully some pepper characteristics. That is a, a big bubbly head, nice great. cream. We've got some ruby highlights at the bottom there. That's great. Yeah, mm -hmm. looks really good. Okay. Get... Wow, a slap in the face of bubble gum. Yeah, yeah that's gonna say very sweet, sweet bubble gum. Bubble gum, banana. Yeah. Uh, British strains can, especially if they use it for an Irish stout. Um, can also send off a lot of those Belgian characteristics, especially on the Astro side. Especially if you under pitch and you do not oxygen and cannot. Hmm. And by under pitch, I'm still saying, you know, 75 million cells per milliliter, which is like about a package and a half for something about this big with no starter. Um, it's decent. I get that bubble gum. So for me, like the finish on this beer is what really stands out. The linger, uh, it, it finishes incredibly dry, uh, almost astringent. Uh, I would agree with that. My, my, my palate's very dry from it. Uh, I, I'm assuming we're looking at the hops from that, Murray. Um. To me, this doesn't like it doesn't feel like a hops astringency. It feels like too much roast malt. Okay. Or the roast malt is just a little touch, you know, it's too dark, too like when I'm making an Irish stout and I'm using my roast barley, we're looking at like, you know, two ounces. You see, a little goes a very long way. And it might just be playing off of the ride as well. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I don't know, this is like coming off of that last one. Yeah, this finish is drier, but it's a dry stout. It, it's kind of supposed to. Mm -hmm. I'm not like I get where you're where you're coming from from the astringency in that it it it's drying, but it's it's drying in an ashy way as opposed to a oh grassy yeah. sort of thing. You see what I'm saying? Ashy is the perfect way to describe it. Like yeah. that. so, it could be yeah. black patent they use. Could be just too much uh, rose barley. That sort mm -hmm. of thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think if yeah. they lessened up on that, that would uh, take away some of that um, for sure. Okay. Um, and what do we think about like rye is like the the key ingredient in this beer? Are, are we seeing seeing it? There is a little bit of spiciness present with it. Um, are you guys letting yours warm up at all? Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm drinking rye. <laughs> but, yeah. It's because I'm finding the rye in the mid palate coming in with the hops. Like there's clearly some earthiness from the hops. Mm -hmm. Uh, but then there's that pepper, and then it goes to ash. Do you get a little bit of the silkiness, like the mouthfeel, I think, is um, definitely definitely uh, affected by the rye as well. Mm -hmm. I think that it's uh, it's there in that sense. If there's, yeah, I'm not 100% certain there's a ton of rye in here, but... I think they could have increased the amount of rye. <clears throat> Probably. Or tried like a different type of rye. But again, rye is, it's not one of those flavors that's going to punch you in the face. Yep. Yeah. So I, I think it's a really well made beer overall. And uh, I think the only challenge, right, is like the, the ingredient rye, right? And this was a style that probably just didn't complement it. It's fun. And uh, I hope the person enjoyed experimenting with it. But uh, for showcasing or highlighting the ingredient, for me, it's not quite. No, 
it's uh, could use some improvement with the rye. Well, maybe. <laughs> maybe, maybe rye just doesn't belong in that style either, right? Really? Yeah. No. I wasn't. Um, I wasn't as put off with it as you guys were. Oh, I won't say put off. Uh, like by no means, but I'm sorry. Like technically, as you know, just a, a beer. Mm -hmm. You know, aside from the flaws that I already mentioned in it. Um, you know, I could probably drink that. Oh yeah. Wow. And again, that was not meant to be any knock at all, because that's a that's a great solid beer. All right. Um, this one is an Irish Red. Uh, it is uh, number five for people at home. And you can tell there's cloudiness in there. I'm not convinced there's a ton of rye in here. Or it could be that a lot of the rye just settled out. How are you guys looking? Uh, Mine has a slight yeah. haze to it, but yeah. the color, I think... Uh, color is on the lighter side for an Irish Red for me, but... Does have a like it's a deep copper. Yeah. I actually kind of like the color on this one, but I do agree it could be a little bit darker. Yeah. Got nice head retention on I think across the board too. And again, we're we're getting that punch in the face of of fruity esters. Mm -hmm. Which yeah, does come out on those British yeasts, especially if you underpitch. Rye, not so much in the aroma, at least not yet. We have some decent head retention on it. Mm -hmm. I love the mouthfeel on this, that's fantastic. Mm -hmm. I'm really enjoying this too. A little bit of candy sweetness in there as well. Mm -hmm. yeah, I do pick up the rye kind of in the middle. Yeah. As well. Um, it's kind of got um, a little bit of that uh, spice. Yeah, it's got the spice in the middle palate there, I'd say, mm -hmm. for sure. Yeah, I agree. Like, uh, pleasant across the board. Uh, really enjoyable. Uh, from the mouthfeel, carbonation, the bitterness level, uh, and the flavors. Uh, yeah, the mouthfeel on it is really nice. Um, decent lacing in a glass. Um, if you're not sure what lacing is, um, for those of you that aren't familiar, uh, if you give your glass a little bit of a swirl, obviously where you see the headlines and stuff like that, it kind of creates your lines across the glass as you see that kind of um, come down what it does with all of that stuff. Uh, that's where you, even if you're tipping it slowly, when you see how fast it leaves a little bit of the foam and stuff on the side of the glass. Mm -hmm. So I think that um, that to me is a, a nice beer. Yeah, I, I appreciate the balance too, right? We've got some, some nice moderate kind of sweetness up front, but it does finish quite dry. And uh, I wouldn't I'm, say it finishes dry. I'd say it finishes clean. Clean. My only real issue with this is the the esters up front. Are, are way too high for this particular style. Um, and as well made as this beer is otherwise, I would not be drinking this on a hot summer day because the body is just too thick for that. This is something that you might want to, you know, it's cold or fall day. Like, you know, today. <laughs> yeah, I was going to yeah, say, this, fortunately, uh... <laughs> this today is a great beer. In uh, two weeks, when it's 25 out, May not be my first choice when I go to. And we tried to convince Marie to do this in the backyard today, but uh, and I said no. <laughs> this was before the snow started. But yeah. to be fair, to be fair, it's not just because you know I don't want to sit outside in the backyard because I'm a pretty pretty princess. It's because <laughs> I mean I am a pretty pretty princess, but um, it's because you can't taste anything when it's colder than your fridge outside. What's, uh, what's that? Uh, so this one is uh, a extra step number eight for those watching. Sorry, what's next? So this is an extra step. An extra, extra step. So this style was popularized in the uh, kind of British colonies. So you're looking at kind of your Canary Islands. This is kind of it's it's a stout, but it's a stout made for kind of hot weather. Was that the extra foreign stuff? Oh, sorry, you're right. I'm mixing that up. My bad. This is just a bigger step. There we go. All right. It's pretty. 
Um, Sorry, I'll let you find that yourself. <laughs> um, head appears to be decent on it. Uh, it's kind of a medium bubble. Uh, color is uh, actually a pretty solid beige. Um, color of it, it is definitely, I'm going to say, a dark brown, maybe a hint of ruby in there. Um, yeah, uh, that's the the dregs. Oh, um, yeah, I told you. Sorry. Um, so yeah, this one. Uh, what is that? That is that's lysated yeast. That's lysated yeast. Yeah. Tell us about lysated yeast. Uh, it smells like poop. Um, basically, it's it's like if you. If you open the, if you if you go to a brewery or if you have one of those fermenters that you can open from the bottom, um, and just like a slug of yeast comes out, smell that, and that's what this is. Mm -hmm. It's basically yeast yeast that has rotted or decomposed, mm -hmm. and some of that has made it into beer. That can happen if you let's say pitch directly onto a yeast cake. It can happen if you just pitch unhealthy yeast. Uh, it can happen if your yeast run out of nutrients or if they've woken up and then had to go back to sleep. Uh, it's quite common in stouts. Um, we're not 100% sure why exactly that particular flavor is common in stouts, um, but it could be just that stouts tend to be brewed at higher gravity and don't really have anything else to mask it, and so it does tend to come out. If anyone uh, joined us for, or anyone that's watching, was uh, part of the beer sensory tasting that Jason Foster put on, uh, this is one of the ones that would have been closer to the end of day number two. Um, so kind of gives you an idea of the range of what we are getting and experiencing with uh, so one of the flavors out of this one. So color, head, um, all of that, I think, is good, um, but I do think it uh, leaves a little bit more could have been done for the <clears throat> flavor side of things. Yeah, um, flavor-wise, I think like you've got the hops there um, that are quite prominent. You've got kind of a peppery finish, like the rice coming out a little bit more toward the end for me. Mm -hmm. um, hops light, or sorry. Um, the, the hop finish is quite light, so you get the hops up front and then they finish quite light. It's not kind of this persistent, you know, clawing the back of your throat thing. My biggest issue with this, aside from the ice hate yeast, is it's a little too sweet for a stout. Mm -hmm. Like we're not talking imperial stout levels here. Um, this is just a bigger stout, mm -hmm. but it is it is still quite sweet. Like I've got not just oh this is a malty sweetness. I've got this is a candy sweetness. Right. So would you recommend an adjustment to the grain bill or just some additional hop bittering to kind of counter counterbalance mm, that? No, I would say we need to adjust the hop, or sorry, I would say we need to adjust the malt bill, mm -hmm. um, possibly too much of the, the crystals in there. It could also be that it, you know, didn't completely ferment all the way it should. Mm -hmm. All sorts of reasons that can happen. Right, yeah, great. I, I will say like the, the the, the flavor is much better. Uh, again, like unfortunately, the aromas uh, are, are, are kind of a little bit off-putting, but uh, taste-wise, uh, that didn't show as much. No. Uh, so good attempt, but uh, but yeah, I hope there was some good feedback there to, to try to figure this one out a little bit because there's there's something good that you're you're working on here underneath. All right, what's next? All right. Um. So next we have the first of a few stouts. Um, we Stout. are, or sorry, saisons. <laughs> um, so this is our eighth beer, and if you're watching at home, this is for number two. All right. Um, so as a saison, uh, mine actually had and came with uh, some great head. Yeah, uh, the tension seems to be decent. They've been sitting for a little while, but when he brought these out, they had uh, almost like a full inch of head on them. So, yeah, um, it's a lot clearer than I would expect for something with some rye in it. But I do like the color of it, though. Uh, it's awesome. kind of a, I can say, a shiny copper. Yeah. 
gold maybe a copper, kind yeah. of a golden yeah. straw color there. Oh, straw, straw is way lighter than that. On straw, but as a gold something. I do you like it? Deep gold. You know, deep gold, is that it? Yeah. No, I'm getting lots of those lovely um, seasonal esters. <laughs> Clearly we went closer to the phenolic side of things. Oh, there's some, yeah, still some banana in there. Still some bubble gum. So it's not, you know, overpowering the phenolic. I do get a little bit of uh, like a lemony citrus as well, just a little bit. Ooh, this is fun. <laughs> Mm. That packs flavor, I'll just say. It does? There's a lot there. Um, this one's fun because it's actually a journey, too. From, uh, and, and that's hard to look at sometimes, right? Like with, I mean, if you're just drinking ales versus lagers, too, is like, what do you get up front? What do you get midway? And what do you get on the finish type thing? And I think those are some of the, most awesome beers are the ones that uh, you know take you some time to appreciate. So, Marie, uh, walk us through what you did on this beer. And you're the one going on the journey, man. Yeah, well, I want to see. I want to see if you're on the journey with me. <laughs> to be fair, this is Iron Brew. If you have an Iron Chef, they always personify. This is like a little boy riding a bicycle. Like, <laughs> I will say, I do watch a lot of cooking competition shows too. So, well, the Iron <laughs> Chef was one of the best ones for that. Like, go ahead. All right, so um, up front, I'm getting a lot of uh, dough, raw dough, which is typical for your, your saison. Um, the spiciness of the rye is present. It's uh, actually present all the way through, which is different, but yeah, not used to that one. Uh, the banana from the, the esters that's carrying through. There's a, this one for me as a saison too sweet for my palate. Um, I like a nice dry crisp saisons. I think this one could have been improved with a higher carbonation if you're gonna keep it that sweet, um, just to kind of dry it a little bit, um, as well as to counteract some of the extra body that's being put in there by the rye. Now, I'm not sure if this person swapped out some of the wheat bill and added rye as a compliment, um, or if they just went rye straight through it. I'm thinking the former just because this is quite clear for that much rye or I mean I'm not sure what their their bill is they would only know that um but it does it finishes clean um and yeah where's your journey where's my journey well I mean I like that this one is quite old rye in particular right and um Again, like it, it is, is it all rye or is it phenols from the yeast? Though? Yeah, well, I mean, and that's probably why, like, that's is the most popular uh, style, like Belgians in general for, yeah. for rye, right? So I think it um, it complements more than some of the other beers that we've had. Uh, but I do agree about the carbonation. Uh, and again, in in uh, the defense of the brewer for this event, I mean, it's not a ton of time to prepare for. So I don't know if this was bottle condition or if it was forced carbonated. But if you've got the ability to bring up that carbonation a bit on this one. Um, you should, but there's some lingering sweetness, right? So if you if this sits in the cellar for six, 12 months, like it could be very nice. And uh, that's typically my style or when I'm brewing big uh, golden golden Belgiums, uh, I like to, to have that, right? Where I, I find they really hit their peak after six to 12 months uh, and they evolve nicely. So this is obviously going to be a young beer and I would expect it will change a little bit. But for me, again, I just, uh, this was the first one that really jumped out on me well, as, as like, okay, like that's that's a, a good use of rye for the stuff. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, I think the rye is fitting for this one. Um, it is some of that, um, I get the, I, I like the spiciness throughout. Mm -hmm. um, could be could be a little bit cleaner though. So I, what's, uh, what's making it dirty to um, I think maybe it's just uh, some of that sweet, lingering sweetness. Oh, okay. Yeah, right. So maybe it doesn't uh, doesn't quite finish clean for me, um, just because it does leave some of that lingering sweetness behind. So I think that yeah, a couple bottles of these or whatever it is, um, put away and maybe aged for a little bit uh, could be a little bit better of a beer later on down the road. Cool. Good work. All right. So another saison. Um, uh, this one's got kind of a burnt honey 
So this one, if you are at home following along, this is for uh, number 10. So number 10, um, out of the gate, uh, I'm knocking head. Uh, don't stick around. I know I'm going to steal from Marie here, a bit of a burnt honey kind of look to it. But uh, it's good. Smoky is what you're going to see as well too on the on the. Well, air. especially with your with, with some rye in there. Mm -hmm. It smells like the trap is high gravity. I do. Uh, I do pick up the rye in the aroma. Oh, hold on. <laughs> we should it. So I'll fix it after. Okay. So, so is this not? It's a different number. Mm -hmm. But Rob, this one's a saison, right? What number is that? Uh, we're this nine? is number ten. No, like this is the oh, on that list. Okay, on the list, it's number ten. And that is that's okay. One before that. Sorry, technical difficulties. We're getting some background. Which beer this we, this coming in live? Just bear with me here, folks. So this is the Arai IPA. Okay. Do you know which well, one it was? The saison before this one. The saison. So what what one, number was it? Oh, the one. Uh, All so right, so let's see. Because Rye IPA, that's a very different beer. Mm -hmm. And we might be judging this totally different. <laughs> so now, still in that somewhere? case, your phenols are going to be inappropriate as opposed to appropriate. Mm. So and that sweetness, sweetness is going to be fine for an IPA. Yeah, that's that's the thing. Like, that was number 13 for people at home. Okay. okay, so this is actually number 13. So we didn't actually do it, but number three, yet. Okay, okay. correct. Okay, so, uh, so this is a rye IPA. I take back what I said about the sweetness as well as the uh, phenolic aroma. We should not have phenols in here. Body is definitely appropriate for an IPA, though. Jesus, I hope whoever brewed number two didn't uh, do something drastic with her beer. Um, so this was uh, 13. Okay. So we're, this is the ninth beer that we've done, though, right? Now, this is the one that we're on now. Yeah. Right? Okay. Yeah. And it is I think you're going to say about the IPA, though. We're, I'm, I'm going back to the one okay. we did previously because he messed that one up. This was supposed to be a saison, or at least told it was a saison. It's actually an IPA. For an IPA, this is not bitter enough. The sweetness is appropriate, but it's also not bitter enough. It needs to, um, the hopping needs to catch up to the rest of it. All good? All good. All good. And the carbonation would actually be more perfect. Carbonation's great. Yeah. Great work. Anyway. All right. But, okay. <laughs> so, so is this the second? That's second correct one? on the... Uh... All right. Okay. So this is our ninth beer, which brings us back to brewer number 10. <laughs> um, so... Still burning, honey. Uh, yeah. A um, little bit lacking head, though. Um, I do get a smoky aroma. I mean, it's massively phenolic, right? I mean, that's supposed to happen. Mm -hmm. It's a say no. With rye in it. Yeah, that is a that is a Belgian campfire. Um, phenolic. Feels decent, a little bit of bitterness. I think actually the right amount of bitterness. Mm -hmm. um, kind of hits you at the front there, doesn't linger too long, just a little bit. Um, I do get a little bit of like a, an acrid smoke. I wonder if uh, uh, you used a little bit of a smoked malt in there to kind of. No, kinda that's, it. that's totally normal for, for this yeast. Yeah, that gets me. But I, think, That's but I think the issue here is that that's getting kind of even more highlighted by the rye. You can taste kind of the, like, think of a piece of rye bread. You've got kind of that dusky flavor underneath. Mm -hmm. That's, yeah. it's not the smoke, it's that, just that rye, earthy, dusky flavor. Mm -hmm. I yeah. quite like this one. Okay. For me, I find this one a bit overpowering. Uh, Probably like, like it. <laughs> yeah, well, it's got a ton of character, right? And when we say phenolics, again, we're getting those uh, uh, 
big smoky uh for me almost like we're bordering into like the band aid side of things band aid uh, no man well for me personally um, but um, but yeah, like the boldness of the spear is is uh, what really stands out, right? And again, with the rye as well too, it's just uh, it's uh, it's intense, right? So again, this is this is the fun part of it, right? Is uh, is the, the subjectivity, I guess, or a little bit of the preference that the, uh, for a day like today, if we were judging outside in the cold weather, this yeah, this would probably wouldn't do well for today um but if you're sitting next to a fire mm -hmm. or if it's a smoking hot day those both work because it's got enough body to kind of work for both of those extremes mm -hmm. just, just under an hour that doesn't have that okay i think we're doing we're pretty good uh, uh, i think i think we're this almost about halfway done two for the people okay so well, we yes just, just one pitch right. yeah we're going to this is the, the real number two for people at home. This is real okay. number two. So, so this is the real number two. So will the real number two please, please stand, stand up? up. <laughs> Who is number two? Is this is a saison. Right? Right? Okay. So, and if you actually stood up thinking we would see. <laughs> <laughs> so this stays in the saison category. Um, oh, I will say, uh, Ooh, what was your carbonation like on that last one? I was kind of. Uh, um, I think it's not fair to judge that one because we sat there and talked about the IPA for a good ten minutes before. We did one fair. that was lacking ten minutes. So fair. yeah, I just the reason I asked, I'm, I'm noticing like significant more carbonation on this next beer too, right? I can see okay, that. Can see so um, I'm sorry, but what the hell? <laughs> Are we sure we got a saison here? I got Fruit Loops and Fruit. wine. There is a sweetness. Yep. Okay. It's not wine. Not according to the label. Okay. <laughs> this isn't a fruited saison, is it? Well, bubblegum has been popular today, hasn't it? Well, I mean, it's that's um, fine in a saison, yeah, but that. this is not bubblegum. Mm -hmm. This is like a good Chardonnay with fruit loops in it. Shark fruit loop Chardonnay. Chardonnay. Would you still put a little toucan on it? <laughs> I'm so fucking loose. <laughs> That's going like, right on the label. Do you know how many people would buy that shit here in Alberta? Yep. Especially if it comes on a box. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Slap that on a cardboard box. You're a millionaire. <laughs> nice head retention on Get this beer. Get to brew it. But uh, big fruity esters are what we're getting. Um, color is decent. Uh, it's kind of a shiny copper. Um, what the hell? Lacing, mouthfeel. I still feel like we could use a bit more carbonation, right? Like effervescent is almost what you want to shoot for on a saison. Okay, uh, so earlier that had lots of carbonation. Pardon me? Was it a, I thought, earlier I thought you said it had lots. It, it just looked like it was a little more lively at first. Uh, this one's still quite cold, so I'm just gonna... Um, yeah, you're right. I, I do get like a... It's weird because I do like I pick up the spice out of it, um, sensing the rye, um, but I get a little bit of a, a banana out of it as well, um, kind of a sweetness, kind of like you were saying with the, the fruit loops, kind yeah. of that fruit sweetness. Uh, I do get some of that, um, but I can still definitely sense the spiciness of the rye or that peppery portion of it. All right, so now that mine's warmed up a little bit, here's a list of things. All right, get your notepads out, people. Okay, so we've, we've got strawberry, we've got pear, we've got styrenes, which is common in this yeast, especially if you don't oxygenate uh, enough. Sometimes styrenes can pop out if you're oxygenating too much, but you're under pitching for some reason. Maybe you're trying to compensate. Um, we've also got a lot of diacetyl in this now that it's warm. <clears throat> so possibly this one... Like this could happen if you rushed it to get here on time and you just kind of cut fermentation a little short or if you were fermenting the basement, let's say weather dropped, which it absolutely did over the past, it's been all up and down and it just crashed your fermenting temperature and dropped your yeast out. Hmm. And it just never quite recovered. All sorts of reasons. Oh, there's the rye. I, yeah. And the rye's there. 
I got the rye on that one quite easily, at least with uh, with my cup here. Yeah, I agree. Like, well, on the aromatics and the flavor, or more so one or the other. Um, I'd say they're actually pretty well balanced. Yeah, for the the rye in it. Um, the body is quite heavy on this one, so I'm I'm happy with that. Mm -hmm. The more, the more the brewery talks about your beer, that's usually a good thing sometimes too, right? Like, well, you just see like the 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 depth of senses that she has. It's it's absolutely freaking incredible. I'm, I'm always blown away. Um, most of us can pick up like one or two things, and then there's Marie that can pick up five or six, uh, which is really cool and just like genetically <laughs> impossible for some of us. See, the thing is, like all of those things I mentioned they can stem from like one cause. So one thing that you did, like let's say the temperature got too low and it crashed your yeast and ta-da, all you have, all of a sudden you have all of these issues in your beer. Um, it's not that you did something massively wrong, it's that a thing happened and it caused all these issues. Mm -hmm. So sometimes it's, oh yeah, you, you just got a whole bunch and it was, you know, a, a hot mess. Sometimes it's just like a little tiny thing and it's a hot mess. Yep. I mean, I'm not calling this a hot mess. I'm just picking out all of these things I'm finding. Because actually, aside from that small issue, it's balanced. It was carbonated. It still has head retention. Uh, the sweetness level is appropriate. It finishes clean, except for the diastole. Um, so, yeah. So between the last two saisons, and again, how many saisons do we have total? We have one more after this one. Okay. There's four. So there's four saisons. Okay. So it'll be good for us to kind of. Come do last saison. So this one's number. Best. So this number one ten. is our tenth, and this one it'd be for number three. So this is the first saison that's been super cloudy. So I'm suspect I'm gonna guess that this has a ton of rye in it. Ooh. Yeah, that's a that's a cloudy. Dark straw. Oh, I would agree with that initial. Ooh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> There's a fungal note in there. Mm -hmm. We're not nearly as smoky as. Uh, like a raw mushroom. <laughs> yeah, I get the mushroom. Yeah. Okay, ask Craig if he sent in his shiitake beer again. Craig, is this your shiitake beer? Craig, we're looking at you. We're asking. Let's see that comment. Come on, buddy. Um, yeah, let's. Because uh, if it's if this is Craig's mushroom beer, then we're just going to call it Oglefoot and move on. Um, <laughs> Remember that beer you made that smelled like pee? <laughs> well, that was the one long time. It was actually pizza. <laughs> <laughs> hey, he just got his jugs mixed up. Um, all right. Um, <coughs> all right. Uh, head retention. Um, it's there. Could be a little bit more. Uh, the head is a decent white, uh, kind of a medium cluster. Uh, as we had mentioned before, it's kind of a cloudy, dark straw color, medium straw color, I guess. Um, does have that earthy, um, maybe a little bit of a fungal, kind of like that mushroom, as you're saying. Something's in there. Yeah. Yeah, I do pick up a little bit of the smoke on the on there as well. Um, you need plastic. A little bit. Yeah, a little bit. Trying to trying to detect um, if uh, I get a little bit of the rye kind of as it warms up, but not very much for the spiciness. But I get a little bit of it there. I get a little bit of a peppery, peppery aroma. Um, and it kind of fades as well into a uh, little bit of uh, a banana, kind of touch of banana on the back end. Mm -hmm. So I think we're looking for like some malt backbone in this beer, right? I think that would would help. I don't think it kind of has that. Um, the rye, yeah, I think we're, we're picking up traces of it type thing, but ultimately I think what it's kind of lacking is that malt and then yeah, like the yeast and uh, it's kind of doing some interesting things here. 
I don't know. I would say that there is a malt backbone. It's just not a complex one. Mm. Like there's clearly, um, you know, a maltiness to it, but it is like this is on the drier end. It's just the body is Some because beer. of the amount of wheat and or rye that are in there. Because I'm definitely getting the sourness from wheat wheat. Mm -hmm. um, fresh fresh dough. Yeah, it's definitely there. Um, it's just when you're going to do a saison and you are going to have all of these powerful phenolics, like that's the way you're crafting your recipe. Mm -hmm. You also probably want to make make your malt bill a little bit more complex to, to support it. Mm -hmm. If you're going to go lighter on the phenolics, <clears throat> uh, yeah, aim for a more doughy, simpler sort of thing. But now that this is warmed up, I've got like Probably not child appropriate, but it smells like a cheap dildo. <laughs> <laughs> We're banned from YouTube. Awesome. Cheap <laughs> dildo? All Jeez, right. Do we have that warning dildo. label to put up? Smells. This is now an 18 plus. Yeah, it's it is for kids and no. Yeah. All right. Would you drink it again, Marie? Would you drink cheap dildo? <laughs> All right. Well, so. Something different. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what number is this guy? Uh, all right, so this is our last saison, um, and this is for brewer number seven. Okay, yeah, see nice so big head retention on my, this one. Yeah, I would agree. Yeah. My initial impression was great head, um, very thick. Um, I think it's still a decent white, maybe a touch of an off white. Uh, color and everything is. I think it's decent. Could be. It's a little bit hazy, though. Could be a little bit green tea and pepper is what I'm getting on the nose. Yeah. Yeah. Green tea. Probably some black licorice. A little bit. Yeah. Okay. Uh, there's also some styrene in here. Again, common for common for these type of yeasts. Okay. Took a good start. I'm not gonna lie, that aroma, like, ooh, that mouthfeel on this. Whoa. The mouthfeel, yeah. It, it's me. It's more the sweetness that's punching me in the face here. I like get a real, like, it's a real sweet fruit. Like, it's like a yeah. mango or a papaya sweetness to it. Yeah. It's sticky almost. The mouthfeel is sticky. Yeah, <laughs> fifteen minutes of simmering, and you would have a syrup. <laughs> Damn, man. You should market that. Okay. Say his own yeah. pancakes. I will say, like, the carbonation is helping here, but, like, we can still take it up a notch even more above this, right? The like, carbonation, I think, I don't think you're going to get more carbonation in here without exploding the bottles. Because yeah. um, yeah. the carbonation level was the thing I was noticing right yeah. off the bat. It's that's what I want in the saison. Right. But because the body on this is so thick. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is a that is a thick body for sure. Like the mouthfeel on this. And, um, so we're worried about the yeast not finishing in this case. Is no, I saying? think there. I think it's just the gravity. Because I've done this before. Is you are trying to make like this eight percent saison, and you're just throwing everything in the kitchen sink in there to bump that gravity up. And yeah, it'll ferment out, but it's not going to ferment everything. Mm -hmm. Like this is thick. It should be like a background dancer in a Beyonce video. It's mm. <laughs> you can be okay there. <laughs> this is the Lizzo of face saisons. Um, that is it. That's <clears throat> there is something. But, see that said, I like it. Yeah, yeah. I do too. Yeah. I'm not gonna lie, like it. I like it. It's a I, chunky saison, but I like it. Yeah, I just wish we were a little bit more dry, right? And then I would love it. I don't even know if you could dry this out anymore. Like with the, the body on this. Yeah. It's cool. Uh, but it finishes clean. Like it's got it balanced. The rye is in there. There's no crazy DMS or off flavors. You know, the green tea and the, and the black pepper, they balance each other. And it finishes clean. I like it. Mm -hmm. Like, I probably wouldn't be drinking this on a summer day unless, unless I wanted to get absolutely trapped. 
I know. Because there is clearly alcohol in here. But it, again, they did it yeah. well. It's not burning my mouth, but you could just, you could tell there's alcohol in here. I'm glad I'm not the only one to say that because I feel like this is the first one that's like starting to go in my head just a little bit too, yeah. right? So you have had like 12 or 15 of them. Yeah. Oh, I would say, like, like, if I was going to start ranking these right now, I'm going to be putting this one in my top three right now. Okay, good. Yeah, like out of the saisons in particular. Like, yeah. For me, I like that Finale one again was more. I know we were on a little bit different spectrums, but I think we could agree like out of the saisons, that one so far. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Same page. Yeah. yeah. No, I yeah. I like it. I <clears throat> kudos to whoever brewed this one. That's. Uh, <clears throat> Great work. That's a that's a good saison. I like it. Okay. Right, um, around. All right, around is this our next? last saison? Uh, or was that nope, the last that one? was our last saison. Okay. Uh, this one. Uh, we, now we move on to a dark Belgian strong. Uh, and this is for brewer number six. So brewer number six. Um, these notes are for you. Um, Great type of can, yeah. it's uh, not not a ton of haze. Kind of a beigey, um, somewhat creamy head. Looks beautiful. It's giving me those Rochefort vibes. Yeah, it's set of brown or uh, ruby. Trying to get the right lighting here. Oh, that's yeah, it's probably got a, a ruby color to it. Real dark ruby. Yeah, slight brown. We're back to those big fruity esters. We've got some dead on this one. You know yeah. what I'm not getting out of this? Hmm. Right. <clears throat> and it's probably just because it's hidden by everything else. Dark Belgian Strong is just, though, these are huge, flavorful beers, and they hide a lot of things that you would normally expect. That's the thing. You could hide a lot of rye in here. Yeah. You would have to you would have to add a lot more rye to, to make get it, it present. Yeah. yeah. Um, Looks great, smells really good, but again, not perceiving the rye on the aromatics and see how it tastes. Yeah, I think it's a uh, initial impression is it's a good dark Belgian strong, but does it present the rye? Okay, so initial impressions is sugar, like just right up front, straight up sugar, which not uncommon for uh, Belgian dark strong, but then it just kind of disappears and I'm still missing their eye. Yeah, I would agree. I'm I get maybe a little bit of a clovey taste, which Belgian. Um but, but I'm missing, I'm missing I, it, yeah it's missing that peppery taste to it. Oh hey buddy. Hi. I think it's a good again a good Bel uh, dark Belgian strong. Mm -hmm. Just lacking on the rye. Yeah, uh, I, I really like this beer uh, mm -hmm. on like almost every level. Like the only knock is right is like the presence of rye. <laughs> uh, for me, like it's very very subtle on the finish. So, like it's there, but again, it's not as distinctive uh, as we've seen on on a lot of the other beers. So no, it. Uh, but I do really like this. But yeah, please bring a. He's bring a, sitting in his yeah, chair. Yeah. Hi, hi, buddy. Uh, please bring a bottle of this to the meetup on Monday because I would love to learn a little bit more and hear a little bit more about this recipe for your dark Belgian strong. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, so we should have just one more left. No, two more left. Correct? Okay. IPAs. 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 So we got two, two left. <coughs> This Ryan, one, this one, one more. Okay. Oh, do I get to do my doctor? What number is this? So this, after that, this should be number fourteen. Thirteen. Thirteen. Uh, dry hot high. Okay. I thought we already did one of the IPAs. We already did thirteen. Uh, By accident. Right. No, I mean, just, yeah. That is for. This, so this is our thirteen. So this is for brewer number four, who did a dry hopped IPL. Hi. It's an interesting One choice because if, is, so if you're going to be doing an IPL um, and your goal is to highlight the rye character, um, you're probably using lager yeast in order to diminish any sort of yeast character that might interfere with 
the rye pepperiness, but then you're going to dry hop it. That confuses me. <laughs> With rye, yeah. yeah. This will be fun. I mean, it smells really good. I can tell the dry hop is... Yep, it's uh, clearly dry really, hopped. Really well executed. Definitely dry hopped. I get a little bit of a... I actually want to say, like, fresh fresh hop. I yeah, really? Just, yeah. I get a little bit I'm of, like, a grassy, getting... fresh hop. It smells like the hops I grow in the summer. Fair. Fair. Because I'll lemongrassy. sit there on the deck and rip them open and snack on them. Yeah, I mean, it's got that lemongrassy element, right? I just, mean, it's not know, coming off just as Just like... chewing on straight alpha apps. It just... Hey, they sign me up. up. They work good. When you when <laughs> all you can afford is a case of Bud Light, you eat yeah. one of those? Yeah. <laughs> I think that's just a... Not all right, buddy. All right. It smells like a bag of crab hearts. Yeah. But you know what I'm not getting? Yeah, again, I think part of this one is for me, I'm gonna say it's did you it's over hopped. The, the color says yes. Ooh, but okay. the aroma says But no. I'm gonna say it's over hopped and it's hiding any rye aromas if there yeah. is rye in it. I haven't tasted it. Or getting very green on, on the palate. Uh, that surprised me a little bit. So what is the logic here? Oh, uh, is, no. Using a lager yeast on the green beer. Because difference between a lager and very briefly difference between a lager and an ale yeast is that a lager yeast is going to use one more type of sugar, so you're going to get a drier beer by using a lager. It's also going to use, you know, you're not going to get any esters. Why? What is the point on an IPA or IP anything? Yeah, that is a green apple. Mm -hmm. Green apple freshness, like that's a Granny Smith apple. Is somebody like answering this in the comments? No? Um, Are there like a yeah, like legit, legit okay. very well could be like a whole coat hop that was used for this, right? Who knows? It could be garden hops. Uh, no, I'm not getting like I'm not getting whole coat hop. I'm getting you know, it just smells like the dry hop did with yeah. either T nineties or threw in some cry hops at the end. Yeah, I get a little bit of that greenness from the... But that's going to happen if you dry hop yeah. from anything. Yeah, but I do get that Granny Smith green apple. Um, yeah. Yeah. Classic acetaldehyde. And there's a little bit of diacetyl underneath it. It's not it's not huge, and it's certainly not something that I would that I would classify as a fault with this beer, but it's it's there. Just I don't understand why the IPL category exists. To confuse you, Marie. To confuse, to confuse you. you. <laughs> I will say, whoever this homebrew is, you make whatever the hell you want. This is what like the <laughs> this is the beauty of this hobby, right? Is uh, experimentation, playing to what you enjoy. And if you want to put rye in a dry hopped IPL, you freaking do it. <laughs> I mean, it's you fun. can say that, but I've seen somebody brew with raw chicken before, so the blood's on your hands, man. Don't do that. Don't do that. Let's <laughs> let's stick oh, to your line. Here. Your line. <laughs> well, let's stick to noble ingredients. How about that? Okay. <laughs> core ingredients. <laughs> core ingredients. Yeah. Chicken, so chicken could be a core ingredient. Yeah. I, was, I don't know if I want to see. You need some. Or you need some extra protein um, for the game, yeah. bro. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Right. So Thank you. This, was, this was entered as an IPA. I'm convinced that's why peanut butter porters. Okay. okay, so this, this, this is, we're going to call it extra pale ale. Is, is entered as an IPA, but the bottle says pale ale. So, so which yeah. entrant is this? Okay. Very a lot. This is number. Is it 13 or 1? It wouldn't be 13 because we've already done 13. So we've done 13, so this should be for number 1. So the, uh, the, the, the bottle said what? All right, so, so classic IPA with Ryan. for brewer number one, and your numbers were sent out to you. Rob would have sent an email last <laughs> night, uh, letting you know what your number is. So everyone is a little bit different. You can't just look at the chart and say, "Hey, number one is this person." You don't get shamed them that way. Uh, Rob well, is the only person that anything. does. Uh, so brewer number one, you submitted an IPA. And this is it. We are going to taste this. Um, final beer. It, it, is this the final one, Rob? Is it last? Yes. 
It is. This is the final beer. All right. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers, oh, cheers, cheers. to our cheers. judges. So nobody yeah. else gets cheers. Yeah, no. hey, hey, cheers, cheers to, to you all out there. Thank you for submitting and supporting uh, the uh, Edmixon Home Brewers. Cheers podcasts. to Brian. Brian is uh, taking very detailed notes. He is the secretary of the guild. Like page 12 or 13. Executing his role incredibly well. Oh, thank you, Brian. Deciphering these notes might, might, notes might be a challenge, but that's a, that's a problem for me. He's editing out my foul mouth. Uh, that, uh, that would crash yes. YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right. So, initial impression um, IPA, um, head retention. I know I've already started a little bit. It seemed a little bit low. Uh, yeah, it's pretty good. I'm fine with where it is. It just seemed like a little bit on the low side. Um, color is, I actually really like that color. It's like a deep gold, um, hints of yellow stream in there, which I think is really nice. Um, you know, looking at it a little bit, trying to get an idea of what I can expect for a mouthfeel. Uh, the lacing, giving it a little swirl, watching it. Uh, yeah, it's got some decent lacing, so I think the mouthfeel is going to be pretty decent on it. Um, aroma. Uh, I get a, a level of greenness out of this as well. I want to say it's uh, like a green, touch of green apple. Yeah. A little bit of that, uh, I'm going to say like, for me, it's that fresh hop smell. Um, for anyone that grows hops or has access to fresh hops, you kind of understand that. Yeah, just a tiny bit of dankness in there too, right? The, there's yeah. a little bit of dankness. Yeah. I think that's more of a hop choice thing. Right. But there's also um, it's like there's the, also some life saving yeast in there. There's a little bit of DMS yeah. in there, some raw corn or boiled corn, sorry. Yeah, I definitely get the corn. Um, from the taste, I get the corn. I definitely agree with the lysated yeast. But uh, see, other than that, it's finishing, finishing clean. Like these are minor issues that are caused by one thing that can be tweaked. Balance is there, the body is there, the spiciness is there, and then it just kind of finishes. This is well written. I agree. And yeah. I, again, like the rye is distinctive on this one as well too, which. Yeah. You're a little unsure for an IPA, right? Like, exactly. Okay, that right? So it's like it could be. It could have been completely overwhelmed. Right. So so it took a chance, paid off. Yeah, I mean, it's probably like the right balance in in the malt bill complex, right? Yeah. Like it's. I like how I'd be, I'd be curious that person to tell us afterwards, you know, what percentage of rye you use, and like if you use more than one variant of it, what it was. But uh, I think, like, yeah, you. You balance the rye really nicely there. To me, the rye hits you up front when you first take a sip, and then it actually finishes with the malt and the hops on the backside, which I like because it gives you that initial peppery spiciness, and then it finishes with the hop spice. Mm -hmm. To right. me, the body on this is too thick to be drinking in summer, but that's probably because of the rye. Like they had to have added a sufficient amount of rye to hit you and still be able to make an IPA. Yep. Yeah. Okay, amazing. So now we've got to narrow down, right? And um, thank you for supplying two bottles because I think, I think that would make sense. I just, like, <laughs> would be to go back and like to, let's make the goal narrowing down to minimum three, maximum five beers that we want to taste again and we want to rank them from first, second to third. Um, what jumps out on you? I've been taking some notes on the side um, here. So for me, um, if I were to rank them like just straight up from what I like the most, uh, my top three are going to be that last saison we had. Yep. Uh, the Czech Dark Lager. So. And this IPA, this was this was good. I wasn't a fan of the issues with these, but like I said, that is a small thing or a small change that you can make that will produce all of these off flavors that I'm getting. Mm -hmm. I agree. Um, the Czech Dark Lager and the Last Saison. Uh, the other ones that I'll put in the short list would be the third beer, the Rogan beer. Mm -hmm. 
the Irish red, and then the last beer that we just sure. had as well, too. Yeah, okay. I don't know if that's too many, but like if I were uh, Well, to I mean, if we're going to go from five to three, I can live with that. Okay. Yeah. Do you Let's want do them that. from for those five? Do you want to sample those all in the order that we you both kind of said? Like, just go from the list from the top to the bottom. Like I Irish red, rogue beer, IPA, Czech lager, saison, or the well, beer? first well, and second thing. So sorry. First would actually be the Czech dark lager, right? Czech dark lager. Okay, yeah. so I'll, I'll get that one ready for you. Saison number seven. Cool. All right. Is anyone, uh, since we still have the comments section open, uh, I can kind of see it on the laptop here now that we've changed everything. Um, they turned it off. They're done with our fit. Uh, no, actually, there's more people tuned in now. So everyone's actually really wanting to hear you rip into the judging here. So open it up. <laughs> uh, so uh, I see there's 11 of you there. Hopefully, uh, anyone. Got any plans for the weekend? Anyone brewing anything exciting? Tell us what you're brewing right now. Uh, tell us what you got coming up on the brew schedule. Um, maybe Marie, maybe you can ask Marie some questions about well, some of that. Yeah, no, we're definitely dragging Marie into it. Um, ask some of those questions. Oh, Dave Moore is actually brewing a Saison right now. Dave, is that a rye Saison? Trying to use up the rest of your rye there? Or uh, what do you tell us a little bit more about what you got going there? We got Amanda, so that would actually Can't be Amanda them. and Austin caked our golden ale yesterday. And G to the X, um, sounds like a cover band. Um, I think Marie this, should do this on weekends with anonymous entries, would Rogue be fun and informative. <laughs> David Moore, depending on, depends on the results. Oh, so Dave, you should have got your results if you submitted a Saison. We would already know what you think about your beer. So, um, again, now we uh, every beer has been drank, every beer has been sampled. You'll have to go back and kind of review the notes somewhere in the previous one hour, 26 minutes. Um, we are going to start with the top five beers that we discovered and sampled. Um, and then what we are going to do is we are going to go through these and these we will um, complete a ranking and we will come up with our top three mm -hmm. and from there we do have prizes for the winners um, this year i will give the big shout out to um, dog mm -hmm. island in slave lake they have donated a prize pack for the winner of this one. Do they have to drive to Slave Lake to get it? Actually, it's just a $10 gift card for a growler fill. Uh, <laughs> in Slave Lake. <laughs> so, <laughs> so for $30 in fuel, no. Uh, no, honestly, they actually gave us a uh, nice little package. And uh, we do have a couple of gift prizes. Um, there are some gift cards from Analog. And uh, we actually had some gift cards from OJ's restaurants, OJ's right. Brewing, or OJ's restaurants, I guess, <clears throat> whatever they're called. Um, so we do have some prizes for some of the winners out there. So again, with this one here, uh, this one is taking us back to the Czech Dark Lager. So this is for brewer number 15, and we'll get a little bit more specific in this one uh, as we uh, go through and create our final ranking to see who our one, two, threes are, all right? So two options quickly on this, just to ad hoc it. We can either just unanimously, consensusly try to come up with one, uh, or if you want, you can write down a little 50 point score beside each of the ones we taste, and then we add them up and we give the winner, you know, the based on the high score. Up to you. Um, no, let's just talk it out. Okay. That's probably faster. Go. So right off the bat with the CDL, um, I am getting toffee. Now, toffee doesn't necessarily mean diacetyl. This flavor or aroma can also be created if you are using combination of a standard kiln malt, so that's something around the Munich spectrum, as well as crystal. So you're using those two, all of a sudden you get this, this really interesting toffee flavor. A lot of people stumble on it accidentally, but I used to love that combo in my Irish bread. It would not do well in competition um, because people would point it out as diacetyl, but it wasn't. That's just the flavor that 
particular combination of grains um, creates. And that's what I'm getting from this. What about you guys? For me, I absolutely love this beer. Um, my only knock is going to be like how well showcased the rye is when it stands up to some of the other ones, right? Because that's inevitably what this event is about is showcasing rye. Yeah. Uh, and I think it is, it is mild at best type thing. I think it's like well balanced. And again, I think this beer scores incredibly well, but uh, that's only not right. Is I think there's other beers that have more pronounced balanced rye. On it, it does. Mm -hmm. um, like there's definitely rye in here. There's still the oxidation that I'm more concerned about at the end. Um, but otherwise, like the fact that you're submitting a logger in this competition at all, you got balls, man. Yeah, you know what you're doing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, touch of oxidation. So maybe watch what your bottling canning technique is. A um, little bit hazy. Um, otherwise, I don't mind the color and stuff like that. But again, um, it's actually. I'm going to say a decent Czech dark lager, but it's a little bit light on the rye flavor. And that was the point of the Iron Brewer was to showcase rye malt. So. Being a dick. Just kidding. It happens. <laughs> I'm just, 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 just bringing my work out. Yeah. Again, I I could drink a lot of that. I know. Yeah. Okay. It's super and again, like kudos for submitting the lager, which is incredibly hard to do. Let's make a good one. Is the Rogan beer? The Rogan beer. Wonderful. The Rogan. Rogan beer. What number is that? Uh, uh, so this is the Rogan beer. So this is called Brewer number 11. And it does, it has that classic Rogan beer aroma. Mm. Oh, which yeah. is a little phenolic touch. Phenolic, a little bit of uh, esters in there, especially your Pardon banana. Me? Yeah. Your bubble. Uh, yeah, just a touch of clove, right? but mm -hmm. definitely more banana. There's a lot more carbonation on this second pour, but I'm still getting that lactic sourness. Yeah. So, again, what, what was most fun for this beer for me was like the aromatics and the flavor of the beer are so very different. Yeah. I feel uh, that it's like it's complex beer, which is a lot of fun, but yeah. that tartness is it's really not fun. supposed to be there. It's not supposed to be there. Yeah. yeah. I could drink it, but it's not supposed to be there. Yeah. This almost is like a premature sour or something yeah like that. if like, someone's like yeah I, I fermented this with philly sour and like, oh, okay that makes sense yeah i totally bought that yeah so if anything um uh, maybe just watch a little bit of your sanitation on stuff like that marie will be talking about that at her meetup on monday so hopefully we'll see you there um and we can maybe correct that problem if that's the issue if this is what you're going for then you are bang on um <laughs> I feel like I could be said whatever. Outside of infection, is there any other way to get that like <laughs> lactic element to the tartness? So, like, you can get tartness from wheat, mm -hmm. but you can't get that specific this lemony sour. Like, yeah, oh. it's it's just a you know flavor characteristic of wheat. But this particular sourness that like is that that lemony tartness that is that's lacto. Or I mean, any innumerable number of other contamination bacteria that can sneak in. It's just lactose the most common. It's everywhere. Again, well done, whoever you are. That uh, that's a fun beer to drink. It really is. Yeah, a little bit warmer outside. I could go sit on your deck. Oh, and absolutely. Bottles of this. Yeah, and again, Wait. the only knock is going to be that that dark plastic element to it. So we'll see where it falls in the scheme of the other beers. All right. Which one was this one, Rob? Irish red. Irish red. Oh, head, uh, so oh, like stood up more this time. So this is the Irish Red. So this is for home brewer number five. So um, head retention is much better than the first time. Incredible. Um, it's yeah. This is an improvement over the uh, first one. Still getting um, the DMS on it though. Thick. A yeah. uh, little bit and of an lactic. off white. Sorry, not the lactic. The um, the light sided yeast as well. Still there. Yeah. It's... Oh, that flavor on that beer, though. You're right. Like, unfortunately, like those, those kind of core, uh, really hard to deal with uh, brewing flaws are more noticeable a lot of times on the aromatics. Mm. Yeah. Uh, I, I personally, but like flavor wise, I think this is why it stood out to us early, right? Because yeah. it's 
The thing for this one is I get the peppery um, esters on the aroma, and I get them in the, the taste. So to me, that's fair. It's yeah. uh, this is. It does showcase the rye. Yeah, this one showcases the rye. I, I, I just for flaws for this beer, I do get them throughout. Like I get, I get the vegetal flavor up front. I get it in the middle. It lingers at the end. I, I think I said it, it finished clean the last time. This time it's it's not, and it could be just because I made it all blow off because I was drinking it warm last time. But okay. so if we were to talk about meddling at this point. Uh, which we're at now. Well, let's finish uh, the last one. You want to keep going? Okay. Well, I'm trying to understand like where we're at so far with the three, but we'll keep it to ourselves. Okay. Fine. So far. All right. All right. I've got my. Let's get the other two. We'll keep you in suspense. Then. This is the, this is the thing I see. The IPA. Okay. Thank you. So, yeah, no heads. Oh, so still the, this IPA. is the IPA. Yes. Yes. Okay. So, which. Um, <laughs> Which one was this? Number, number seven? I'd be I'd no, know, this is like number, one. number one. To know what hop they number used one for this action. Yeah, number one. Is it number one? Like whether it was no. New World versus Old World. When you say that, whether it was like a North American grown hop versus a European yeah, grown as hop. As opposed to, oh, no, this is clearly, this is, has clear North American characters. This might even be like, so, you know, Australian or New Zealand. This is the IPA from Homebrewer number one. Um, so... A little bit of sulfur on this one. This is the second bottle, eh? Hey? Yeah, this right. is the second bottle. So the bottle. sulfur blows away. So yeah, I see. not a huge I got issue. that too. Yeah, hit retention were pretty pretty low to medium overall. Like, yeah, no, it's a solid IPA, and the rye kind of sticks around again through it. Yeah. I do get a little bit of, I actually think, and I know it's not fair, but the red one before had a better rye aroma, but I think the rye taste on this one is better. I agree. I would rate this higher than the red, just because of the amount of flaws on that red. And, um, and the fact that you can pick out rye in an IPA. That was a brave choice. Yeah. Yeah, that's the thing is I, I'm not, I'm actually kind of happy with the bitterness level and the hop level on yeah. here, and I can still sense the rye. So in an IPA to be able to still have rye stand out, um, that's, yeah, that's pretty solid, I think. All right, Robbie, we're ready for the last one. This guy has been crushing it too at this point. This is the last one you have to serve, so you might as well take a bow right now in front of everybody. I will take a bow. This is the guy that's the last keeping your operation Thanks. running. <laughs> well done. Rob Taylor, everybody. <laughs> Put your hands together, everybody. Yes, Rob. <laughs> Epo Hojcik weekend beer update. Uh, Rob Taylor is uh, <laughs> awesome. Sorry, was this? this is the Saison. <laughs> All right, so this is Saison. Uh, this would be for... Home brewer number seven. Yeah. Um, Rob, just so you know, uh, Dave Moore says thanks and good job. Um, so back to the judging. Uh, the I mean, it's pretty impressive looking beer, right? Like yeah. it checks off all the boxes for aesthetics, the big head retention, you know, the beautiful golden color. It's got a little bit of haze there. That's yeah, really there's a little bit of haze. Rest, I do like the head, and that's a. But you need like the haze yeah. is indicative of the. Rocky yes, for beer. sure. We're, we're not. Are, you're just going to get rid of that. Haze. I think we're just pointing out the fact oh, okay. that I don't think we're haze is somewhat allowed in saison, so yeah. I'd have to bring that up on the BJCP. It absolutely. Is. Um, um, but, but more so, anything just, you're going to put rye in, it should have a haze because yep. you're not going to get it to drop out unless it's super old. I think it smells incredible again, uh, Marisi. Uh, I got mint and black licorice. You said you also got. I some, got yeah. <clears throat> Green tea, black pepper. Yeah. Now, this one, like, out of all of it, this is the one I would pick up and drink every time. I but do. I am, like, saisons are my jam. I do get the the rye, I like that peppery out of the aroma, um, definitely on the taste. 
Um, this one still a little bit thick, but I still don't mind that. Yeah. Like, yeah. If this came in a 20 ounce pint, I would crush it. <laughs> and then wait for a couple hours before yeah. driving. Yep. Well, not, we're not the town I'm from. <laughs> so it's friendly, it's the town it's called Saskatchewan. No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, just a small little community of Canada, Saskatchewan. Um, no, it, um, yeah, I, that's Rob? Chris? Chris? Yeah. <laughs> Rob, Rob's drinking it too, Rob, so everyone here. Rob, you can I do think it's, Yeah, I really like it. Is yeah, this the same one? Or is this? I don't know. What, what, what did you pour me here? That's the Saison there, Ultra. This is the last one, yeah. Okay. Amazing. Well, I think it's pretty unanimous. I think. We'll... So I would say this is number one. Yeah, That's... I agree. Well done, whoever you are. And from a BJCP standpoint, Marie, like we're are we? In the so we, on that we would still be having to uh, score this as an experimental. Okay. Now, experimental is one of those categories where really it is up to the judges as to either they're going to score it weighted toward how brave you were, um, or they're going to score it toward how much they liked the beer. It's really all over the map, but if I was sitting at a table judging it, which I am, um, I would rate this probably top amongst all of these other experimental beers. Right. Throw a number on it. Are we in the 40s on a beer like that? Um, so as far as as a numerical score, yeah, it's probably going to be in the scoring in the 40s. The yeah. point we would be subtracting from it would mainly be around the body. Uh, and there's only five points in mouthfeel as, as far as that goes. Yep. Incredible work. That, uh, that's an amazing beer. Okay, so we've got a unanimous number one. Congratulations, whoever that Saison is. Because there were four Saisons, make sure we get the right one, too. Yes, this right. is for number seven. seven. So yep. congrats to Brewer number seven. We salute you. you Congratulations. Uh, okay. You can't see this, but Rob. Um, uh, I guess I'll jump in for like second place for me because it was obvious. Um, I think the second place is the IPA for me because they that, took yeah. a risk on it. And again, it was distinctive. And again, like the, the character of the rye uh, was well executed. Absolutely. No, I agree with that. Okay. Okay. So congratulations to home brewer number one. You took second in the iron brewer competition. And if I had to choose the bronze or the third place, I would go with the Irish red. Um, my thoughts, your guys' thoughts? I was going to go with the CDL. CDL. To me, the Irish red shows Sorry. the. Uh, <laughs> oh my god! Try a little bit more. <laughs> I mean, this is the fun part because all three are. Yeah. Are, are really good beers. They they are, and uh, they were all unique in their elements as well too. Yeah. Uh, so it, it is incredibly close. Uh, for me, if if I were to go to between the two, uh, I would go to the Irish Red just because there was more prominence of the rye over the Czech. Uh, overall, the Czech might have had less flaws in it, but again, elements of Iron Brewer. Let's get rye in there. So absolutely. Um... But it's not like the CDL did not have rye in it. Um, mm -hmm. And also, as opposed to, you know, it just had fewer flaws. It was also technically more difficult. Mm -hmm. Which yeah. is, you know, kind of one more hurdle to jump over. Hey, that just shows off the uh, quality of our home brewers that are part of the group. So um, I completely agree with that. Um, I think the point of the Indian <clears throat> brewer, though, was to bring out the presence of the rye. That uh, we would have to say that the Irish Red probably presented it a little bit better. Well, not by much, but probably a little bit better. I mean, I can't argue with that. No. Amazing. Both um, winners at the yeah, end of the day. Honestly, to me, it would be a three and a three A situation. Mention. Sorry, Honorary definitely yeah. honorary mention to uh, the Czech Dark Lager. So uh, that is. And to that broken beer. Yeah, like fun beer to drink. But unfortunately, the lactic just. Yeah. That was too much flavor. So, or, yeah. Which one are we calling the third? The red or the... They're going with the red. I'm going to vote in here. Democracy. democracy. In, the, in the newsroom, yeah. not that they talk about democracy on okay. I'm not Saturday gonna, Night Live. I'm not going to storm album. the Capitol. Okay. <laughs> what? Okay. Oh, we're going to have an April 6th. Yeah, one April. insurrection on an election and they make a big deal about it. Like, <laughs> <laughs> with that being said, everybody, thank you for joining us. We are sorry about the audio 
issues. We are complete freaking amateurs at this. And uh, well, we, we hope, hope you enjoyed it. Better next time. We hope you had a great first yeah. time. Yeah, Brian, get in here. Uh, so there is five of us that put this all together. Um, as the president, I do want to say thank you to everyone here who is an exec member and made this possible. Obviously, the time and organizing and everything like that, everyone getting together to judge it. Chris for hosting it in his basement. Um, and Brian taking notes. Marie for judging. Rob for stewarding, running everything around. Uh, we are really just looking. carrying a loaf of bread. And now yeah. we're going to eat rye bread. Now we're going to eat rye uh, Rob's rye sourdough <laughs> with <laughs> caraway a butter. Caraway <laughs> butter um, and kind of soak up. Um, <clears throat> Just looking back at some of the comments here, um, before we kind of wrap it up here, prefer this format to meetings, you would, Craig. Uh, <laughs> I don't think I would do this, David. Amanda, this is stressful. Amanda, I hope it wasn't too stressful for you. If it was, you um, were that I called. Stuff. Oh, can we yeah. find out who the winner was now? Like, uh, Dave and G to the X both said, okay. thanks to Rob. G to the X was, congrats. Well, let's announce the winner now. The winner. You don't have to worry about the five. So, first place, so, Rob was. First place was uh, the Saison made by myself. Hey! Oh, oh, yeah. so, I love when you're bowing. <laughs> you're like, bow. No way, really? Second place was the, uh, which, which style? But I like how he knows his own way of knowing. Yeah, so. yeah, come on, Rob. He's just sorry, dancing. Sorry. Though, All right, so, so IPA, right? the yeah. second yeah. beer was IPA. number, we were number one. Yeah, and that was from uh, David Moore, the Rye IPA. Nice yeah. work. Well Whoa. done. Ooh. Good work. job, David. And uh, number three was Irish Red, yep. made by the Chris nope. and Brad Mull. No. Sorry. Number five. Sorry, my bad. Number five, <laughs> Irish Red. Yeah. Walter Chris Brothers. Yeah, Walter, Walter Brothers. Brothers. Walter Brothers, right. yeah. Okay, cool. Good work. And who's the CDL? The, C the CDL, uh, the Czech logger, that was uh, Sarah. Nice yeah. job, Sarah. Sarah? Wow. Yeah. Nice. Awesome. That's and, really and the cool. roving beer is the other. It was Tom. Tom. The last one to drop off. Tom almost missed the drop off. <laughs> he got <laughs> it. <laughs> someone, is that the one that someone mentioned maybe needed to ferment a bit longer, like it was rushed or something? Uh, I don't know. I think that was me. Anyways, I think um, we're. Yeah, so there is. Um, so congrats to the winners. Um, good work, man. Good, uh, good, work. good job to that. Uh, some QA. Um, right. You know what? I will allow a couple minutes of Q&A. If you can get your questions in right now, because I've already had a couple of responses here. Uh, thanks for the feedback. It is rigged. Amanda. Kind of uh, <laughs> uh, you know what, Amanda? Had I known it was Rob's beer, I would have rigged it. Um, uh, Dave, cheers. Dave, great job on that IPA. It was... Uh, what comes as the temple? <laughs> Is Discord blowing up right now? No, just one of the comments was what what causes the dildo flavor. What is uh, it? Like most of us don't know what a dildo tastes like. But... <laughs> All right, so that I couldn't answer myself either. So um prizes on Monday. Uh yes, we will have prizes on Monday for those in attendance. So we do expect to see Rob, uh, Dave, uh, Dave in second, and I believe it was Sarah at number three. Um, so yeah, we will hope to see you all on Monday at our meetup at Ben Stick, and uh, we will be able to get those prizes handed out. Uh, Marie, um, Amanda says, Marie liked ours, I'm good with that. Craig Lee is dying. Oh, Craig. If only, man. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Um, I don't have anything else to add at this time. I do want to thank everyone for joining us. I see we had anywhere from 10 to 12 different uh, viewers. Uh, let it be. Uh, thank you all for your time. We're going to sign off. We're going to enjoy uh, Rob's um sourdough rye bread here and we wish you all happy beer drinking and we'll see you all on monday at bed stick 6 30 see you there
Come on, quick end. Quick end. It's right there. Quick end. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. 